Hello my friends, my name is Ashkan and in today's tutorial I'm going to talk about the equations and formulas behind Caesar 2. We usually use this amazing software without knowing even the basic equations behind it. In this video, I'm gonna reveal a tiny part of them which are related to stress calculations based on ASME B31.3. Following to our previous video in Caesar 2 load cases, you now are aware of different load types that we usually struggle with during stress analysis. For a quick review, the main three different load categories are primary, secondary, and occasional loads. The first group is related to the sustained loads, the second group is for displacement-driven loads, and the third one is analyzing the occasional loads on our system. For more information, you can click on the video uh, with the link above and watch it. Now, please pause the video, review the load types here, and get ready for the equations. While pausing the video, please like and subscribe the channel. As I told you, this video shows you the equations of ASME B31.3 and their connections to a stress analysis by Cesar. First, let's get familiar with the main definitions we need to know. We all know the yield and ultimate strength of materials in stress-strain diagrams. The yield point is the transition point that a material behavior is changed against force and, in general, a stress. When the stress-strain combination increases in a material, its elastic reaction to the force is changed to plastic reaction. This transition stress point is called yield strength or YS and is defined for a large group of materials in ASME B31.3 table A1. When the stress is increased to higher quantities, the ultimate tensile strength or UTS or SU point is reached. Uh, this point is the moment when the material starts to fail and after some moments the failure happens. The next two items are allowable cold or SC and allowable hot or SH stresses, which are also shown in the table A1 of ASME B31.3 and are one of the main parts of this tutorial. SL is the computed stress due to sustained loads, SA is allowable displacement stress range, and SE is the computed displacement stress range. Don't hurry. I will explain all of them to you. First, let's get deep into the first four items, which are yield and ultimate strength, allowable cold and hot stresses. To do this, we need table A1 of ASME B31.3. As can be seen here, ASTM 106 grade A is highlighted by red color here. In addition to units number of the material and its P number, which is used for knowing its building specifications, some other data are also here. Let's review them one by one. The first column after the notes is the minimum temperature. But minimum temperature of what? This column tells us the minimum temperature that a material can be used in a surface without doing impact tests. As all the material scientists know, by reducing the temperature of metallic materials, their brittleness is most of the time increased. To prevent basic ruptures in piping systems, we need to be sure that our material can maintain its toughness features during the operation. So, this column tells us that you can use your material within this range without doing any further tests. Be sure that no sudden ruptures happen in your piping system. You may ask what is the maximum temperature of this range. This item can be also found in table A1 for each material. By scrolling down the table A1, you can find the highest temperature that each material can be used, which can be up to 1500 degrees Fahrenheit in some cases. Obviously, when the temperature is raised, the allowable hot stress is reduced. The next two columns are telling us the exact quantities of yellow strength in green box and UTS in yellow box in KSI that you are now familiar with them. The next columns are related to allowable stress of materials. These are the limits that we use too much in our analysis. The blue column is our allowable cold stress, which is applicable when the service temperature is between the previously mentioned minimum temperature as the lower side of the range and 100 degrees Fahrenheit as the upper limit. 
This is called a lovable cool distress. When the temperature goes beyond 100 Fahrenheit, we enter into the lovable hot stress range, which is highlighted with the orange box. For each 100 degrees Fahrenheit, the code is defining a new allowable hot stress. When defining the nine temperature cases in the software, the scissor itself finds the allowable cold or hot stresses from these tables and compares them with the calculated stress in our system. Your second question is probably raised here, and it can be on the method of calculating the imposed stress in a system. How the software quantifies the value of our system's stress? This is the key point of this video. So, I want to answer this important question. But before that, if you think this video is useful for you and your friends, please tap the like button and share the video. Remember the loads that I told you at the beginning of this video. They were sustaining loads, secondary or displacement driven loads, and occasional loads. As maybe Tedim 1.3 defines a formula for the calculation of stresses which are because of sustained loads in a system. This formula is SL and can be found in section 320.2 of ESME code. But what is the allowable range for SL? Think for some seconds. Yes, exactly. Allowable hot and allowable cold stresses are the upper limit of SL. Let's go to the code and read the exact text. As you can see, section 320.2 is giving us the formula for SL. To calculate SL or longitudinal stress, we have to find bending stress or SB first. And SB can be found by having I as moment index, M moment due to sustained loads, and Z as sustained section modulus. When the SL is found, we have to compare the output with SH and SC as stated in section 320.1 of the code. In this paragraph, the code tells us when the detailed analysis is performed, the stress due to sustained loads, or SL, shall be computed and combined as described in this paragraph and shall not exceed the allowable described in paragraph 302.3.5. In other words, it says go back to section 302.3.5 of the code, which is here, and it brightens us in all the concerns the designer might have. As you can see, the code is telling us if our spiking thickness is according to the code requirements, we shouldn't be worried about the internal and external pressures in stress analysis side of view. Then, the code tells us to calculate the sustained load stresses by SL, and if SL is higher than our SC or SH, that design must be revised. In these cases, in scissor 2 modeling, the load cases will appear in red if SL passes its allowable margins. Not only we design our system in a way that SL is below SH, but we usually also set a 60 or 70 persons margins for having our system in a safe side of the design. In a separate video, I will explain the recommended margins for load cases analysis. To prevent losing the track, let's review what we have learned up to this minute of the tutorial. This table shows you the key parts of the video. Pause the video and review it for some seconds. As the next part, we now want to calculate the displacement load stresses or the stresses which are applied to our system due to displacement of our system. As you know, these movements are because of thermal expansion and contraction, huge structures, settlements, or events like this. So, first, we need to know the amount of stress which is generated due to displacement. For this purpose, section 319.4.4 of the code introduces us a factor SE. This formula combines SA as axial stress range, SB as bending stress range, and ST as torsional stress range, and gives us the displacement stress in our system. We need to maintain this factor below SA, which is 
the allowable displacement stress range and is defined in section 302.3.5. Let's go back to section 302.3.5 to see what is the allowable displacement stress range. As you can see, we have two margins for this purpose, 1a and 1b. The second equation, or 1b, has greater amount than 1a, as is said by the code. Let's read the exact explanations of this paragraph to make it clear. When SH is greater than SL, the difference between them, which is a positive value, may be added to the term one-fourth of SH. This clearly means that 1B equation is greater than 1A, and as a result, we will have a higher margin for our displacement stresses. We even have a corresponding section, says a 2 for these equations. Go to the input design section, click on special execution parameters, and click on liberal stress allowable. In this case, by turning on this option, the software will set equation 1b for its allowable range, and this means higher displacements are accepted in our system. So, we are now in the next station for reviewing what we have learned up to here. Briefly, SE, or computed displacement stress range, must be below SA, either in form of 1A or 1B. In this condition, the load cases would be in black color, which means our system is in a good shape. Now, let's go to the final step, which is the limit for occasional load stresses. As stated in section 302.3.6 of ASME B31.3, we need to analyze the occasional loads during operation and not the test. You see the orange section in which the code is expressing that there is no need to consider the occasional loads such as wind or earthquake during test. Now, when calculating the occasional loads, the sum of the stresses due to side strain loads, such as pressure and weight, and of the stresses produced by occasional loads, such as wind or earthquake, may be as much as 1.33 times the basic allowable stress provided in table A1 at the metal temperature for the occasional condition being considered. So the sum of sustained loads and occasional loads of stresses has an upper margin, which is 1.33 times the basic allowable stress. There is another distinct scenario for elevated temperature fluids. As is highlighted in blue, when analyzing a system with high temperature, the allowable stress are the lowest quantity of A, B, or C cases. Case A is multiplying world strength reduction factor by 90% of Ys. Case B is 4 times the basic allowable stress in appendix A of the code. And case C which is for occasional loads that extend over 10 hours during the whole design life of the system, says that the stresses must be below 20% of creep usage factor. Each of these cases are an ocean and cannot be covered during this video, so please go and read them if you are interested in them. Before going to the summary slide, have in your mind that if you are using a casting material, you have to multiply all the calculated allowable stresses by EC, which is the casting quality factor. Now let's sum up. We calculate the occasional loads by using SL formula and compare it generally with the 1.33 times of the basic allowable stress of the software. High temperature services have a different story which shall be followed based on the explanations I mentioned. You can also open the help of the software and set US code stresses. In this page, all of the design codes formulations are presented and the allowable margins are defined. By having in mind your design code, such as B31.3 or B31.4, you can find the computed stresses and their allowable margins. For example, in this page, you can see the reason why I told you in one of my videos that there isn't any limit for operation stresses in software. As you can see in yellow box, no limit is defined for the uh, operation. 
So the software tells us that operational stress limit is not applicable. In addition, you can uh, see the exact computing and allowable formula for equational and assisting load cases in the red box. Be sure that by reading the help of the software, you will better understand the logic behind the design and this will help you to be an outstanding stress analyzer. I know you are now faced with a considerable amount of information. Don't worry, just read the code, surf through the internet, this knowledge will be obtained gradually. Uh, thank you for watching the video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe the channel. I would be happy to see your comments in my page. Thank you everyone and bye bye.